Just kidding. Oh, that was way easier. <laughs> no, it was easier. Well, that was the easy one to do that. Oh boy. Well, this is really green. <laughs> We're a team now. We got it. Okay, you end it. I'm gonna refill your measure. Well, I'm gonna attempt to get some insulation in the ceiling by myself. I thought I'd wait for Brittany to see if I can do it. The sides are gonna be the hardest because I don't have a piece to tack into other than the studs on the side. So yeah, see if I can do it. Have a run. I'll start here. And you hold it behind me. And let's just start working our way up. So I need you to go on the other side of the ladder. Because I really need you to pull it tight from the there you go. That end. We're gonna we'll finally get good at this on the last one. Five more, sweetie. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi, Hi, bud. Now we got it. Okay, you end it. I'm going to refill your measure. Okay. Okay, here you go. Ah. Yeah. So we got a couple gaps here. My uh, cripples are these studs above my window. Um, header are a little wide. So I ended up being a little wider than 24 on center. So I put a little more insulation in those gaps and I'm just taping the, securing them with some tape. I got the tape, it's almost out. I'm gonna use it. I don't really need to do this, but I am. Well, we finally got all the insulation in, completed that nine foot wall. Had to do a little patchwork there. Everything turned out good though. Everything's nice and filled and tight. And then there's back towards the front door and that other side window. You hear Murph out there. He's whining because he wants to come in. He loves the cabin already. So yeah, so those end runs of insulation along the walls are a little loose because they're just kind of pushed up on the ends. Once I get the uh, tongue and groove, that'll just hold that in place, of course, so. 
Today, I'm going to get the ceramic insulation inside here, get it metal taped. Um, to do that, I've got my, this is a six inch double walled pass through that I'm gonna come into with an elbow from the inside. So I wanna be able to have this sitting in here so I can put my ceramic fiber blanket around it. Now, in an earlier video I showed, I got these pretty inexpensively on Amazon. Ceramic fireproof insulating block. These are like 20 bucks. Um, but as you can see, these are not gonna fill the space and they're too expensive to get all the pieces to do a jigsaw. I need three more. And I was like, you know, let me see what else is out there. So then I found this ceramic insulative blanket. Um, this is for things just like this. So this is gonna allow me to go and fill that void in between the metal um, and around that pipe with this material. So I'm gonna double this up and I'll tape it in place with metal tape. I am gonna use these two, since I have them, I'm gonna put one here like this, which will be no issue towards the bottom. And then this one here, I'll take that pipe out. I'm gonna need to make a couple cuts. I'm just gonna need to cut that out and I'll trim that edge. And then those two should fit together and I'll have the bottom covered. This stuff's pretty messy, pretty powdery. So the top layer, you peel right off and then there's a little center core that you got to cut through some more I realized again I was gonna use these for this whole thing I bought two on Amazon for like 20 some bucks and for the two pieces they're as you can tell small I would have needed three more and I realized I still had all this gap in here for air. That's okay, an air cushion's good, but then I discovered the ceramic blanket. All right, you can see that's just holding that in place. I mean, this is gonna be enclosed. It's not going anywhere. So we are 19, basically 19 and a half wide by 23 and a half tall. So I'm gonna to try to straddle the hole. That's what I'm gonna to try to do, and then maybe push this stuff out of the way. I've seen people do this and not put anything between these two pieces of metal. And the air will act as an insulator, um, but I obviously am. Gosh, I probably should use a little more of this material, I guess, huh? Well, since I've got the insulated blocks, I guess what I'll do, I'll cut these, this one here. Stuff makes me nervous and looking at it, touching it makes me think it's asbestos, but it's not ceramic. So all right, I'm gonna say that's gonna work great. And I'm going to go ahead and just secure that with a little metal tape. Cut this at seven and a quarter. That's a seven diameter. I probably should have kept it at seven. Cut it too big of a gap. Now I'm going to have to close that gap. And it's just one more thing to do. It's really not that big a deal, but. Could have made it the box smaller. I wish I would have done that, but whatever. Um, with my framing. But anyway, I didn't know where I wanted this to fall exactly yet. So that's why I made it a little bigger. Um, but I looked for a pre-made wall thimble for my setup here for seven inch. Doesn't exist locally that I could find. And then I know that, I know I could special order stuff, but I did not, I am not transitioning on the outside to insulated triple wall or stainless steel. I'm keeping this galvanized black pipe double walled from the stove to the elbow to the elbow to the pass through outside to the next elbow and then on up to the spark arrestor. I'm keeping it simple stupid. 
I know this can get super hot for full-size wood-burning stoves, and you would need more than six inches of standoff. I only need six inches with this double walled, but um, you could close that down even smaller. I think it's two inches with the insulated. But this is only a just over, it's a one cubic foot firebox in this stove. And it's 13 inches long and it doesn't hold a lot of material. It is not a super big stove. It's a small stove that will heat this cabin just fine and you can cook on it as well. But it does not put the kind of heat out that justified um, going to the insulated stainless steel exterior, all that other stuff. And I would have had to do a whole bunch of different things, recut this. So I'm not doing that. I can now um, tack on my metal sheet the inside piece, which will be covered except for a small box with the appropriate standoff. My beadboard will sit over the top of this. Let's do a test check. I can always pull those two nails if I need to. What we'll have here is the beadboard will be nailed on the sidewall and I will have about six inches over. I'll have a box around this pipe, six inches standoff. Metal behind this to protect the wall. The pipe can breathe back here. We've got the insulative ceramic fireproof layer in the uh, expanse of the void here, which is kind of nice. So yeah, I think that's gonna be good. Some people may say, well, just take this uh, for the gap for a you know, draft or something coming through. But uh, I don't know, I can't use plastic tape on it. This does, it will get hot. So yeah, I guess maybe um, this is on the insulation anyway, on the paper edge. I'm gonna go ahead and metal tape the edges. So that, uh, why not? And we'll just go ahead and seal it. You see, I'm kind of coming a little more on angle this way from this one. Just because I wanted to turn it a little bit, the hill kind of came down this way, our path, the natural uh, lay of the uh, drop of the hill. So this is kind of good to have it angled that way. These are just scraps of pressure treated two by sixes that I had from doing our foundation, our rim joist um, and our boxing as well as our deck and stairs and stuff. So I had some extra pieces and I bought one more extra two by six pressure treated just to do these stairs up here. But it looks like I may have enough scrap to get it done. Get some more pieces of rebar here and I'll go ahead and secure this, stake it with some rebar. get out the old circular saw and cut, trim that board. Two 
by six. So I'm using pressure treated lumber. I already told you that ground contact. I did use a couple pieces of scrap on my decking, which is pressure treated. It's not ground contact, but it'll last a long time. Most of this stuff is all the ground contact, except for this piece. And I think that one, that one. I'm also using coated screws. You can use galvanized. Um, and these are exterior wood screws. So they're gonna hold up for quite a while. Kind of tying in with the contours of the terrain coming in to the cabin pretty happy with how it turned out and uh this gravel will settle in tomorrow we're supposed to get rain quite a bit of rain too so that'll settle everything out clean the dust up and we'll see how everything looks after the rain so happy with this being complete Next thing is nailing in the tongue and groove in the walls and the flooring. Doesn't matter what the weather's doing for that, I'll be able to get work done. So cool, looking good.